Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about stopping the program. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I have been programming for years and I suddenly stopped programming for a long period of time. Will I lose my ability to program? Yes. Well, you will partly lose it, but you're. N I don't think you have to worry that you're you're not going to completely forget about it. I mean, it's once you have learned how to ride a bicycle, you know how to ride it. It's just that you're not going to be as good at it if you stop doing it for quite some time. And in programming, it's pretty much the same thing. The one difference here is that with a bicycle, at least the bicycle stays sort of the same. And in software development and programming, you might find that the way that you like to do things is outdated. An example would be if you in the last five, six year ish stopped doing front end development, last time you did it, you might have uh, been using jQuery and some HTML and some CSS, and today it's all about SBAs, for example, which is a fairly big change. So, although your skills are still relevant in the sense that if you're making a old, uh, like a standard website or something that is a little bit outdated by now uh, you're fine and those concepts are still the same it's just that now it's standard practice for most companies to use an SVA not all the time but in many cases that is the case and this is something that you should be very aware of when you structure your career strategy I think uh, I have worked with a few companies now and one of the things that I see more than a few times is that you have people who make a choice and I've seen both sides of that choice. I've seen it from the people that I work with who make the choice and uh, I've seen people who try to get a job who made that choice a long time ago and that choice is to get involved in the administrative work of your your in your job in your company now why is that an important decision well it's a very important decision because it's the thing that is going to dictate what sort of coding skill that you're, you're going to be able to maintain and what your future role is going to be like i can only say that in the worst case scenario and this very but remember now guys I don't want you to say and think that this is a bad thing it's just a decision that you should be aware of I have seen many many people come in the door looking for a job as a software developer and within the coding interview we realize that this person hasn't been doing any serious coding for years this person has been a tech lead and in their mind that means the same thing as being a software developer and when we test them on coding challenges or how up-to-date their skills are they don't even realize it themselves that they have been com become complacent in their minds they're still as sharp and as relevant as ever but they're actually not I have friends who, pr who used to play football who are the same way they have grown a beer gut and they still th they, you know in their mind they're still in their 20s and still fit as fuck being a, a, and it's the it's the same thing this sort of thing can sneak up on you and before you know it you actually are behind the times now I'll tell you a short story where a co-worker where we had at a, uh, at a previous team that I was working in so we had a requirement basically from our PO stating that well we need some type of tech lead character or rather that's not what they wanted they didn't spe specify that they wanted a tech lead they needed someone to help with the administrative work of the product owner because that person could simply not keep up with the, all the stakeholders and at the same time groom stores and prepare work for the developers. And at the time it was just me and two other guys who were, who were in the team. And so we talked about it and I said if you absolutely must have somebody and none of you guys wants to do this I will do this as a temporary thing but it's not something that I want to do long term 
and otherwise we might, might need to find someone else to do it. And one of the guys, he signed up and said, yeah, I, I, I can do this, I think that I would enjoy doing this, and he was a very good fit for it. And now he, and basically the idea, the original idea was that, well, you're just going to do this 20%. And guys, when any, whenever anybody says to you, you're just supposed to do this thing 20%, they're just take it from me, they're idiots. That's not how it works. There is no way for someone to have a like a percentage of a role. The the real in in real life, you uh, have to prioritize the thing you have to prioritize because if something comes up and it requires you to put full focus on it and it is your job even if it's just 20% of your job you're gonna have to focus on it until it's finished and I know that and anybody who's ever been working in a in a professional capacity for a while should have noticed this very quickly especially if you have a manager it, that it doesn't matter what they tell you what matters is how is the work done what are the motions of the company and if you take somebody at face value and they say oh you're just gonna do this a little bit you are kidding yourself because that's not they, they can say whatever they want well at the end of the day what's gonna happen is exactly the thing that happened I told him I actually warned him and I said you should be aware of that this is going to very quickly become a role where you do this more than 20%. You should be aware of that you're going to lose out on most of your coding or that this is going to be the primary thing. And he says, uh, well, I, uh, let's just see how it goes. I don't think that it's going to be that bad. And I go, I promise you it's going to be that bad. I know that for a fact because I've seen it a million times. And I think that you still should do it because I think that you will fit very well into this type of role. But you should be aware of it said and done he starts doing it and exactly the thing that i told him happened because what ha the problem wasn't that the company needed someone to take 10 to 20 percent because when you gave them when he gives them the 20 percent now all of a sudden he is more he becomes more indispensable to my po uh, to the po and he can answer more questions which means that he's guess he's he's going to now go from just grooming the stories to prepare work to sit with customers to plan out roadmaps to do PowerPoint presentations to produce documentation all of these things that the PO needs and should technically have someone who is hired to do well now he is that person uh, he will be able be forced to do and the 20% very quickly turned and he became a 50 50 and now I would say that it is almost 70-30 uh, and the rule is usually that anything that you do in an, in a, in an administrative capacity uh, depending on the company because that's the key thing it could have stayed at 20 percent if the company really only needed someone who does the barest minimum thing but that's not what we that's the thing that's what they said they needed but if you pay attention, you know that that's not what they need. They need a full-time hire. They just don't realize it. And that's where you should be aware of that making that decision can very quickly turn into that. Now, it, it for him, it turned out really well because he, he's been doing it for years now and he actually enjoys it. But I had another coworker because this was not the first time. The second time it happened, they needed someone to be more involved in the sales process. And I stared, I, I told them, I, I'm not going to do that. I even I have a, I started a little rumor about myself or rather I, it doesn't actually it's not really a rumor it actually is sort of true it's just that I overplay it so people are a little bit scared of pulling me into a meeting because uh, I found that if you cultivate an air of unpredictability about yourself where you might say you know you making appropriate jokes at times that are funny but they are not really the sort of thing that you would say to a customer and you cultivate the idea that you could say that at any moment people are really nervous about bringing you into a customer meeting where everything just needs to be so and everybody has to play their part and that makes it very easy for you to avoid these sorts of responsibilities and uh, my coworker is not as versed in that uh, he has I think for the last three years something like that completely hated the fact that he is basically forced more or less to leave his coding behind and be in sales meetings and do technical sales and so forth and it's only recently where the company has cared enough to try to figure out a way to get that off his back and all he needed to do 
was to to uh, be, and I mean he's losing his coding skill basically to do this thing. It's such an innocent thing, and it very quickly leads to this thing that we're talking about, where you will lose uh, a lot of your coding and a lot of your programming uh, opportunities for doing things that any manager can do. And depending on if that's what the thing you want, that might not be the best thing for you. Because the one thing that you should really know is that the value that you have, although these things are useful and very valuable, most of the value that you have is not found in the fact that you can make a PowerPoint presentation. It is found in the fact that you have deep uh, system uh, domain knowledge and good coding skills. And being able to produce in that area will always allow you to become someone who can help out in the administrative tasks. But if you ever change that ratio, and you do more management than more administrative work than anything else, you will very quickly lose touch with the, the code base. I've seen many founders and CTOs and people who used to be coders who went this path and they don't even realize it. And all of a sudden they sit in a meeting and they make an ass out of themselves because they don't. They think that they understand the system, but they actually haven't been coding for so long that they don't know the first thing about the thing. So, what I want you to take away from this is that yes, coding skills, uh, if you stop doing it for long enough, you're going to get out of touch. Uh, you're not going to forget how to write code. You're going to get out of touch with the latest tools. You're going to get out of touch with the domain that you're working on uh, in your co company and the tooling and practices and stuff like that. All these things are a commodity that you, keep, you have to keep fairly fresh. That's not the end of the world. I'm just saying that you should be aware of it. And this thing can happen very easily. It usually starts with that the company needs you to do some type of administrative work and all of a sudden you are going from just prepping stories to talking to customers and you become a more and more b and bigger big independency not in every company but you should uh, if the workload is what is high enough it they can tell you 20 percent that's never 20 percent it is do this thing that we desperately need right now because we have made it your job it's supposed to be 20 percent of your job that doesn't matter it is your job even if it's just 20 percent and you do it until it is finished that is usually the way it goes and if you want to maneuver your career and you depending on what you want that might not be the best thing for you there are other roles where you can st stay in a more technical capacity and still progress your career have a great day